It's funny how many small details you forget about a game's development, even just weeks after it's over. Luckily I made lots of notes for this series since I was too busy to actually make these videos until after the competition was over. Flammable Freddy did take three days to make, but I first made the project file for it on the 14th of August, which I then left on my desktop as a reminder to actually make it. Day 1 of development was on the 25th of August, day 2 was on the 26th, and day 3 was on the 31st. And the deadline for the competition was the 3rd of September. All of this made the development of Flammable Freddy far more relaxed feeling than, say, Destruction Darius had felt. That game had been for a three-day game jam. Non-stop game development from start to finish. But Flammable Freddy's three days were relaxed. I'd do a bit and then go off and have some food, or play a game, or chat to some people. I hate myself for becoming more slack about this kind of stuff. I can't imagine myself ever doing a 24-hour crunch period these days, as much as I used to enjoy the thrill of it back then. And yet, after three days of development, I'm left with a game that I'm just as happy with as I was with Destruction Darius. And those few days left before the deadline I dedicated to extra playtesting. I didn't really work on the game, but other people did, grinding away at the gameplay and suggesting thing after thing. By the end of all this, I was left with an entire page of suggestions. It's incredible, really. When you leave no time for playtesting, you assume you'll find just a few things. Then when you get around to playtesting your game, you discover all sorts that needs fixing, and the process of doing so takes much longer than you'd expect. And then, when you finally think you're all done with this and the game's complete, you share it with other people and the same thing happens again. Because you can only play your game your way, but other people will find all sorts of clever ways to unintentionally break it. Simple stuff like, oh, some people would rather use a controller than a keyboard to play the game, perhaps I should add support for that. These sort of changes don't affect the game for me, but it does for other people. And so it's stuff like that that I worked on including in these last few days. And I went about making the game even more forgiving. You know the rules, you're on fire and when the timer runs out, you die if you haven't reached water. But this can lead to annoying situations like where you die as you're about to land in the water. So I made your character only die if they're stood on the ground or when flying up in the air. No matter how high up you are, as long as you're falling when the time runs out, you'll be okay. Earlier in the project, I discovered a bug where you'd set fire to stuff even if you're high up in the air, which I fixed. But then people discovered that it was annoying to be unable to set things on fire while flying through the air, so I made it so that you could still set fire to stuff on the ground, no matter how high up in the sky you were. Earlier on in the project, this sort of stuff was considered a bug but now it's a feature. Let's hope the judges see it the same way. So it's like, for this game, I invent a whole new set of rules and then I go about breaking them all to make it less infuriating on players. I try to give the players the benefit of the doubt. This kind of fairness is particularly required with a new type of game that players are unfamiliar with, but it does also open up to criticism if people try to take what they're seeing literally and without consideration for what's best for the gameplay. I was really clever with the movement. If you press WASD, the game lets you use WASD to control your character. If you use the arrow keys, it switches to the arrow keys. But if you press a button on a controller, it switches to controller controls instead. All in real time, just to keep this game as accessible as possible. But one, and just one of my playtesters, experienced a problem with this. At the start of every level, they were unable to move for several seconds. This playtester knew what he was doing. It's not like he had a controller he didn't know about plugged in somewhere with a direction continually being pressed or anything like that. But I couldn't risk the judges also encountering this same problem, so I did away with this clever control switching and swapped it out for a stupid little control option on the menu instead. Which is a shame, but it was necessary. The Destruction Darius 2 posters all over the levels had a solid bar that you couldn't walk through, and it was getting in the way of movement and was even knocking players off the side of islands and into the water below. So I removed the clipping entirely. And now it looks bugged because you can run straight through a metal pole. But again, it's better for the gameplay to be able to do this. For the explosion jump achievement, which requires you launched enough times by barrel explosions, there was no way of knowing how much progress you had made towards this in a playthrough. Did 10 simultaneous explosions beneath you count as 10? Or 1? I did consider displaying your progress towards this bonus on screen, but decided for the tidier, more secretive option of not showing it but making the achievement as forgiving as possible. Every explosion in near proximity to your player adds one to your explosion progress, and I also dropped the number of explosions required in order to make this an easier achievement to unlock. One playtester discovered an easy way to beat the game in less than 10 seconds. You just press escape the moment the first level begins. There was another bug where the bonus achievement didn't add to the high score bar, and then I thought I had fixed that but it still wasn't unlocking stuff, so it's just as well I gave myself time for others to discover these things, and then for me to fix them. 
I had one player ask if they could see the inner workings of the game, and I showed them thinking they were just curious to know what went on behind the scenes, and then they proceeded to suggest ways that I could try to eradicate one of the bugs that they had found. This suggested to me that some people think these bugs exist because I don't know how to fix them, but most of the time it isn't that. The fixes are easy. The hard bit is in discovering the bugs in the first place, especially if you're so used to playing the game your own way that you don't think to look for them in your playtesting. And I guess in a more complicated project I would require more information on how the bug arose in order to know where to look to fix it, but this game is simple enough that it was pretty obvious most of the time what was causing them. I took the time to make this splash screen. In game it's just something you click past the moment the game loads in, but it has uses elsewhere. It makes the game look more appealing to download if you feature this splash screen on the sites that people will download it from. Because let's be honest, if I've bothered to give this game a flashy looking splash screen, then the game itself has got to be kind of awesome, hasn't it? And it also doubles up as a rather fancy video thumbnail, I think you'll agree. And it serves another purpose as well. Flammable Freddy's option menu looks quite intimidating, doesn't it? Where do you click? What do you do? Well, this first button that you see on the splash screen explains both, even though players won't notice it when they play the game. For a start, it teaches them that things with white outlines can be clicked. And if you look at the position of the Start Game button, you'll see that the only thing that players need to do to start playing the game is to click in this exact same spot, twice. Now you're aware of this, let's look at the main menu of Flammable Freddy and see how it's applied here. I will be the first to admit that I'm terrible at making option screens. This one is messy, chaotic even, kind of like the game itself, but it's very, very functional. Everything you need is on this one screen. I could have simplified how it looked by putting different things on different screens, but I hate needing to click more than I need to. So in a way, this screen is what peak performance looks like. I dot the options about the corners of the screen, start the game down here, switch to full screen up here, change controls over on the left hand side, and how to play down here. This used to be just a load of text, but I thought it looked a bit tidier to hide it until the mouse hovers over this corner of the screen. And with all that in the corner, the rest of the screen is dedicated to the unlocks. These lines leading from the high score bar to the unlockables represent how high your score must reach before it's unlocked. And on top of this, hovering your mouse over one of these unlocks explains what each of them is. So while it's far from being the greatest menu screen of all time, it does do its job in a brutally effective fashion. Did I make it obvious enough that players need to click on these icons to switch to unlocked gear? No, I probably didn't. How could I have made it more obvious? I don't really know. When you're meant to make a new game, what can you reuse from older projects? Another entry for the competition submitted an older game but with added fire, and the judges deducted points from its score for doing that. But how about a new game but with pre-made graphics? I still think that's cheating and I didn't do it with Flammable Freddy. But how about the sound effects? Is it okay to reuse old sound effects in a new game? Is that still a new game? Let's be honest, most people don't make their own sounds. They borrow them from CS 1.6 or from a site online somewhere. I combined sounds from online into unique sounding creations, so I think I went further than most in this regard. The one thing I did steal from an older project for Flammable Freddy was the music used in this game. I just didn't see the need to construct a new soundtrack solely for this, and so I used a song that I had made called That Night Before, or at least several different cut down arrangements from it. Every game developer has unfinished projects from their past that haunt them. For me, it's the game I originally made the song That Night Before for. 2009 I think, and I wanted to make a Christmas themed game. It was about two children who escaped from home just before Christmas, and went on an enchanting journey to the North Pole to meet Santa. It was to be an RPG like Santa's Atnas. Along the way they'd encounter all sorts of sad and terrible things that would gradually erase any childlike wonder left in their lives, until at last they stood at the edge of a snowy wasteland. If they had learned the hard life lessons from their journey, they'd understand that it would be foolish to go on, and would simply hug each other before returning home. If they hadn't learnt enough however, then they'd push on into the endless snow in search of Santa, with the game ending with them meeting him in what's presumably a hypothermic dream just before they freeze to death. That game would get people into the mood for Christmas, wouldn't it? I was young and wanting to shock people when I had planned that one. Obviously I'd never make a game so morbid these days. So I'm pleased the song for that game eventually found its place in Flammable Freddy, a game about a man who spends his life on fire and in intense agony, whose only respite will be to huff on asbestos gas until its final breath. Yeah, I decided unlocking asbestos gear had more joke potential than becoming a diamond, so that's something else I changed in these last few days before the deadline. Towards the end, other entries for the competition also started to be submitted, 
and I decided my graphics weren't up to scratch, so I devoted an hour or two to giving the player some shading, and to manually placing black outlines around the edges of all of the islands, cliffs and objects. It doesn't change anything, but I think it makes the game look a lot better. I thought I had been generous with time, I thought it was going to be a leisurely stroll to the finish line, but an hour before the competition ended, I suddenly discovered that, while fixing a bug with the game where the player would start the level running even while stood still, I had overcompensated, and now the player's legs no longer moved even when he was meant to be moving. Freddy just appeared to float about the level, so I got that fixed with just moments to spare and submitted the game for the last time. The Trial by Fire game making competition received 6 entrants, and was judged by 3 long standing members of the Click community. All three deemed Flammable Freddy to be the best, and I won the competition. It was pointed out that the bonus and upgrade features had been done in older games before, and that, while I had given the game controller support, it didn't extend to controlling the menu screen. But I see all this as just, the more you add, the more there is to criticise. All in all, I am very happy with this, and it looks like, after all these years and many failed attempts, that I finally earned the Daily Click's prestigious Game of the Month award. I may get hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, and I may deal with things far bigger and more important than a small click competition with no real prizes, yet winning this has meant so much to me. It is like revisiting my childhood, but from a new perspective. It has helped me to discover how far I've come, and has rekindled my excitement for what the future may hold. Up until recently I saw becoming 30 as being like the end of my life as I knew it, where all of my interests would suddenly change and whatnot but apparently that hasn't happened and I'm happy to still be improving, and in ways that would make 8 year old Philip proud. And of course it's been great to have been given a good excuse to make a new game, and to have to contend with all of the choices and problems which arise along with that journey. The game making journey.